Welcome to day two of the Biostock Life Science Spring Summit. Here to kick things off is BioInvent, a biotech company developing antibodies for cancer therapy. To present the company is CEO Martin Walshoff. Welcome, Martin. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. And I will jump right into my presentation. Uh, so this is our forward-looking statement. Obviously, you will remember that we're listed in Stockholm on the OMX uh, stock exchange. And I would start, uh, start as usual with a short introduction to the company. Uh, so there's a snapshot. So we're in the immune oncology space based in Lund, roughly a little bit more than 100 people. Uh, we're a relatively integrated company. So we do target discovery, uh, antibody discovery, production, as well as then, of course, clinical development. Now, a sweet spot is really to identify new mode of actions in the space of immune oncology and then translating them quickly into the clinic. In that sense, uh, we currently have a portfolio of five programs uh, running in the clinic, soon six. And the platform that we have used to identify and, and uh, develop those uh, uh, different treatment options has been already nicely validated through a number of collaborations. So we have more than 10 uh, of such uh, collaborations ongoing. The most recent one was actually with Exelixis, uh, where we signed a deal last summer. But we also have antibodies at uh, later stages with those collaborators. So we have antibodies in phase one and phase two with companies such as Mitsubishi, Daiichi, Takeda and uh, Bayer. Uh, we are listed in Stockholm, as I already mentioned, uh, but we have a very strong institutional shareholder base from the US and Europe. And you see those names listed there. Our largest shareholder is, is Redmile, followed by Van Herk Investments, uh, Forbion, HBM, Omega, AP4, Envos, Swedbank, Rubu, Handelsbank, and, and AXA. And we have been quite active in fundraising uh, during last year and the two years before. So we have uh, a good uh, bank account. So currently we have 150 uh, million US dollars on our account, which gives us a runway based on our current plans until the end of 2025. So we are in the space of um, cancer therapeutics and we really try to address a high unmet need. Uh, so everybody knows that immune checkpoint inhibitors such as Keytruda and others have become the standard of care for several uh, cancer indications. Uh, and they're quite efficient, but still, you know, there are around 80% of the patients that do not respond to those new treatments. And we're trying to address specifically that space. And one reason why we believe that there's still a high unmet need is because that the number of targets that are available uh, are quite limited. And, and that's what we're trying to address with our uh, platform that I would like to introduce you on, on this slide. Uh, it's our reverse screening tool co called FIRST, Function FIRST. Compared to traditional ways of screening, you would normally use um, you know, uh, a target that you have identified by certain means, let's say genomics. And then you start the screening process and get some compounds and, and put them into preclinical and later into clinical development. We start the other way. So we actually start directly from patient material. So we have a very close collaboration with the local hospital in, in Lund, such that we receive fresh material on a regular basis and then identify uh, antibodies from our uh, large human uh, combinatorial antibody library, binding specifically th to those uh, material of interest. And once we have specific binders identified, we characterize them regarding their function, which means you would test those antibodies in a number of animal models and would only select those that show strong therapeutic effects in a number of animal models, and then we identify the target. So the target identification for us comes at the end, and that's why we call it a reverse screening. And I think this is a very interesting uh, platform because number one, we screen directly on patient material, so it has, have, has to have clinical relevance. Number two, we characterize already, already during the screening process the function of those antibodies and would only focus on those that have therapeutic effects. And then we identify the target. So that means by the end of this platform, we have preclinically uh, relevant and characterized antibodies that then can go directly into clinical development. And as I've mentioned, so this platform has been uh, actually uh, used uh, by a number of our collaboration partners and, and works very efficiently. And we used it to build the portfolio, which is outlined here on this slide. And I will just use this as a summary and then go through briefly through the various programs uh, specifically. You can see currently five programs uh, in the clinic. 
uh, program number six is about to go into the clinic. We're concentrating around uh, three different targets. One is FC gamma 2 b which is the only inhibitory receptor of the innate immune system, so a very important target. Then it's TNF receptor 2, which is one of the new and upcoming checkpoints. And then we have our version of an anti-CTLA-4 antibody that we're developing in collaboration with uh, Transgene. So uh, you can see on the right-hand side a couple of names. So the first program, uh, BR1206, which is our lead, has been already partnered for China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan with Kasi Pharmaceuticals. And then you can see that we also have uh, Merck there a couple of times, but Merck doesn't have any rights. Uh, so those are just uh, supply and collaboration agreements. And we get uh, Ketruda, which is the number one product of Merck for free. And then you see the name Transgene. Uh, this is the 50-50 joint venture of the BT001. So very briefly uh, regarding the programs. So this is BR1206 um, that we developed for non-Hodgkin lymphoma as well as for various solid cancers. There you can see here on the outline of the clinical trial. So we're focusing on patients that do not respond anymore to the standard of care. We have done the middle part, which is the dose um, escalation and we have moved into dose expansion. And we have been actually quite successful already during the dose escalation part. So we had a lot of uh, good response already at this early stage. So this is based on 15 patients only. We had four complete responses and a couple of partial responses and stable diseases. And very importantly, uh, the complete responses are long lasting, which means um, we have responses that are lasting more uh, for more than two years after the end of treatment which I think is, is very astonishing and, and very exciting. We have also developed a sub-Q version for this um, uh, antibody that is currently in dose escalation, and that data set should come out uh, uh, soon. So in summary, you can see here, uh, you know, it's a very compelling uh, scientific rationale. It's first in class, and we have seen long-lasting complete responses, which is, I think, very encouraging for uh, the compound in this specific indi in indication, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Then we have a second trial uh, addressing solid tumors, and there we're addressing solid tumors uh, of patients that have relapsed the standard of care, which is either anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1. Here we're a little bit more early, still in dose escalation, but also in this dose escalation process, we already have seen first encouraging signs of efficacy. We had two patients with strong partial responses. And here we are also enrolling soon the sub-Q version that we're currently testing in the non-Hodgkin lymphoma case. And uh, we'll also update on the IV uh, in the next couple of weeks. Then coming to our second uh, NTFC gamma R2B, which is BI1607. Uh, this is uh, an antibody also directed against the same target, but with a different mode of action. We have started clinical development uh, last summer in combination with trastuzumab. And uh, that data set will come out during the second half of this year, which means the early stage uh, dose escalation data. Then switching gears to TNF receptor 2. So I mentioned already in my summary slide, this is a very interesting target. Uh, now, when we started this program, we were one of the few. Now there are several companies, including Novartis and Beijing, also having programs around TNF receptor 2. But we are the ones that are most advanced. Few of our competitors are not even in the clinic yet. Some are but at earlier stages. As you can see on the clinical trial design, we are developing this as a single agent as well as a combination with uh, Ketruda. And the single agent data set is almost ready and should come out in the next couple of weeks. And once that is done, then we move into a couple of interesting uh, dose uh, expansion uh, indications, ovarian cancer, uh, small cell lung cancer, and then also CTCL, which is a rare T cell indication. And then uh, we, in parallel, we're moving already in the uh, combination trial with uh, Ketruda. And that data set will be available uh, during the second half uh, of this year. So um, that's a summary. Uh, as I mentioned, the next steps will be really uh, the two different dose escalation uh, readouts, the single agent as well as the combination. What we have seen so far is, uh, you know, early signs of efficacy and the safety is also uh, excellent. So we could uh, dose up to 1,000 milligram without any problems. Then to our last program, uh, BT001, which is the combination of the oncolytic virus platform of Transgene with our proprietary anti-CTLA-4 antibody. The principle here is really that you clone the gene of anti-CTLA-4 into the virus, as shown here in this 
diagram. You infect the patient uh, with the virus containing anti-CDLA4. And then what you could see preclinically as well as in the clinic, that you have a very high concentration of the anti-CDLA4 only where you want it, though, which is in the solid uh, tumor environment, and uh, no systemic exposure. And that we could demonstrate actually preclinically as well as in the clinic. Uh, the trial is ongoing, so um, we, we have finished actually uh, part one and could show uh, that is very uh, well tolerated. We showed also some first indications of efficacy as a single agent, which is always an encouraging sign. And now uh, we're moving into the dose escalation in combination with pembrolizumab. Then uh, what is next? Uh, it's, it's listed here. So as I said, so basically really the enrollment into the uh, combination with uh, Pembro. That's the next step for this uh, very interesting program. At the end, I would like to uh, briefly also summarize the antibodies that have generated with our partners, which is kind of an external portfolio. And I mentioned already at the beginning that our platform has been successfully used uh, in a number of collaborations. And you see the different programs that have been generated during those collaborations here on this slide summarized. So there's a couple of phase one and phase two programs in collaboration with uh, Mitsubishi, Takeda, Bayer and Daiichi. And the latest edition of uh, this is the deal that we did with Exelixis uh, summer last year. And uh, also this uh, collaboration is progressing very well. And we, we hope that we hit the first milestones already uh, during this year if everything goes according to plan. Then at the end, uh, the final, final slide, uh, the expected key catalysts for 2023. So I mentioned most of it, but just to summarize it again, so 1206 sub-Q, dose escalation data set during the first half of this year, then uh, start of the sub-Q within the Pembro combination of BI1206 also during the first half of this year, and that will also include an update on the IV. Then we would have the first uh, data set around the single agent dose escalation of 1808, and then start the combination, the combination with Ketruda for BT001 that will also happen early uh, second half of next year, and then the two first data sets around the combination of 808 with Pembro and the combination of 1607 with uh, Trastuzumab during the second half of this year. And then last but not least, we also kick off our trial number six, compound number five, 1910. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation, Martin. Uh, you started out your first slide the title of the presentation was Unleashing Immunity to Fight Cancer. Why does the immunity need to be unleashed with uh, medicines in the case of cancer? Why can't it unleash itself? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question. And of course, I could answer this very broadly. Uh, I try to be brief uh, as much as I can. So uh, you could argue that you have cancer because the immune system didn't work in the first place for whatever reason. And then, of course, what you would like to do is to activate it such that your own immune system, your own body fights cancer. And we do mm -hmm. that in, in two ways. So if you look at the immune system, it's two parts. It's the so-called adaptive on one side and the innate on the other side. And uh, interesting target in the context of the innate immune system, fc gamma 2 b mm -hmm. uh, the only inhibitor receptor of the innate, uh, where we have two antibodies, as I already presented. And then we have two targets for the adaptive side. One is TNF receptor 2, which is a potential new checkpoint. And then the other one is CTLA4. And both are targets that are on T regulatory cells, which are in the vicinity of the uh, cancer. And they downregulate the immune system. Mm -hmm. And to take them out is upregulating the, the immune response and, and trying to activate or unleash the immune system. No, it's, um, it's quite an interesting concept. And uh, that actually brings me to my next question, which is there are a myriad of uh, immune oncology companies out there. How does BioInvent stand out among all others? We stand out because of the interesting platform that I introduced uh, briefly, uh, because that allows us really to identify new targets. As I also mentioned, I think on my first uh, two or three slides, so there are already uh, good treatments available, such as Ketruda or Ipilimumab, uh, checkpoint inhibitors. Mm -hmm. But they only help uh, 15 to 20 percent of the patients. So there's still a uh, high unmet need. And that's mainly due, at least to our uh, perspective that we have on it, uh, to the lack of new targets. 
And with our platform, we are uh, able to identify new interesting targets, and, and most of our programs are first in class. Mm -hmm. And lastly, <clears throat> you, uh, you obviously have a strong track record for uh, partnerships. And um, I'm wondering, what is your strategy for, uh, first of all, striking these deals and then keeping such deals? Yeah, f to strike this deal so that it's relatively simple, you need to have something which is addressing unmet needs for mm -hmm. those companies. And we do that with our first platform, uh, as already uh, explained uh, um, on, on your second or during your second uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, and, and secondly, to keep it is basically you have to deliver. So uh, you have to make sure then what you promise to the company, because you make a promise uh, and for that you get a nice upfront, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And then you have to keep the promise, which then would uh, release a number of milestone payments. Uh, and then at the end, also uh, royalties if it becomes a successful uh, product. Uh, and, and what we always do is once we strike a collaboration, we make sure that we can deliver. It's mm -hmm. obviously not, not a 100% guarantee, but we do whatever we can in order to deliver. And that keep, uh, keeps those uh, collaborations running. So as long as, long as, as this is successful, it will run. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much for answering the questions and thank you so much for the presentation. And uh, we look forward to uh, continue watching uh, BioInvent delivering. So best of luck. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you.